In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome all to worship on this first Sunday in the season of Lent, a season marked by the disciplines of Lent, the disciplines of fasting, of additional prayer, and of giving loving works of service. But this uh, season, of course, is marked by a time of a little bit more reservedness, a little bit more quietness, all so that we might make room, a little more room for Jesus during this season, which I like to call a holy springtime for the soul. And so today, as we gather on this first Sunday of this 40-day journey to the festival of the resurrection of our Lord, and as you encounter the risen Lord this day in the words of Scripture, in bread and wine, in the fellowship we share, may you indeed be blessed to be a blessing to others in the week to come. A special word of welcome to those visiting this day, whether here in person or visiting online, it is a blessing to have you in our midst. We do invite you to sign the guest book by the sanctuary door or to fill out a visitor card and leave it in the offering plate so we may continue our welcome of you in the week to come. Um, and those watching online, uh, please send an email so we may uh, follow up with you as well. So all that you need for the worship service this day you have before you in your bulletin, which you, for those who've been here before, notice is a little different. We're experimenting a little bit with the format, um, trying to make it maybe a little bigger, um, looking at the cost of production and the types of paper. So if you have any feedback about this uh, different size bulletin, different format, please let me know. Um, it will go into our discernment around that. So following worship today, all are invited to a very, very brief time of fellowship out in uh, the narthex. There is a bake sale happening, um, and the, the proceeds for the bake sale um, go to our Neighbors in Need Fund, which we all know there are many neighbors with much need. Um, so your generosity is uh, much appreciated. I did say a short time. Uh, abbreviated time of fellowship because um, all members and friends are invited back into the sanctuary um, after you grab something for sustenance for our um, congregational meeting. Um, the reports um, for 2022 and all the work that has been done here um, are available on a little round table just to the right of the sanctuary door as well as the agenda for the meeting as well as a purple sheet um, you might recognize them as time and talent sheets, but they're really opportunities for all of you to share the ways in which you feel the Spirit might be leading you to be involved in the life of this congregation beyond Sunday morning and what one receives in this time. So um, all are invited, whether uh, a member or not. Members and friends are invited to come for that very important conversation, as I said. Some very important information about the future of Gloria Day will be shared at that meeting. So it will be live streamed and recorded so people can see it after, but I do invite you to stay. So um, I believe those were all of the words of welcome um, I had for you. Just to note that um, throughout the bulletin and the, our worship service, we stand and we sit, we sing and we speak. Um, and it is all as you feel led by the Spirit to do so. This is, um, you know, for those who've not been here before or in a Lutheran tradition, worship in a Lutheran tradition is participatory. Um, you sing, you speak, you stand, you sit. It is not an opportunity to come and watch a performance. No, we are gathered together in this together. Um, uh, it is not a spectator sport, I like to say. Uh, but it is as the Spirit moves you. And so at this time, as the Spirit moves you, I invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in our gathering hymn.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sins, and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O God. Against you, you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above the earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our strength, the struggle between good and evil rages within and around us, and the devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall, raise us again and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time I'd like to invite the children who are here to come up for just a moment. Good morning, Madeline. Good to see you. Good morning, Delbert. Good morning, everyone. I know what those are. Oh, do, huh? All right, we'll see. Good to see everybody this morning. Hi, Lily. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's good to see everybody here. And of course, my always question, it seems, what do you notice is different here today than last Sunday? Do you know, Madeline? It's all purple. That's right. We have purple on the purple pyramid on the altar, right? We have a little bit of purple up there on the pulpit. And of course, I'm wearing purple on my stole. Purple is the, season, the color for this time of the church that we're in, this season that we call Lent. And I'm wondering if anybody has any idea why in the world this, this season, this 40 days that we're in, would be using the color purple. Do you know why? It's because um, we have special colors with different times of the year. This time is purple because Jesus, this time of year, sacrificed himself for us. Yes. Very right. We have lots of different colors for the year that means different things. And this is to help us remember what Jesus did on the cross. Do you have another idea? Lent. Hmm? Lent. Lent. That's right. Lent. It's Lent and it's purple. Yes. 
So you are right on the right track, Madeline, about that. It's about Jesus. You see, when Jesus was going to be carrying his cross and be crucified and all of that, you know, the people were making a lot of fun of him. They were spitting on him. They were hitting him. And they were saying that, you know, he was nothing. He wasn't at all what he said he was. You know, he said he was there to show God's love and to heal people and to forgive people. But other people didn't like that at all because he was taking their power away from them. And so they started making fun of him. And one of the ways they made fun of him was they, when he was all beaten up, they threw this beautiful purple robe on him because when Jesus was alive, purple robes were something that kings wore. Purple was the most expensive colored cloth that you could buy, so only kings wore them. And so to make a lot of fun of Jesus, they put a purple robe on him and said, ha, 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 see, what kind of king are you? So we take that color purple and we say we're going to dress ourselves remembering how they made fun of Jesus and how Jesus had the last laugh, right? Because we know the end of the story that Jesus was risen, right? But we remember how much fun they made of Jesus because, you know, have you ever had people make fun of you? Hmm? Yeah, your brother, right? Uh-huh. Really? Yeah, I've had people make fun of me for things, and it doesn't feel good, does it? No. No. But when that happens, we can remember Jesus and how they made fun of him and how he loved them anyway. And that when we feel bad and somebody's making fun of us, we can remember Jesus and how much he loves us. And so today I'm going to give each of you a little purple cloth. And you can do whatever you'd like to do with this. You can tie it to your backpack. You can just put it in your pocket. But I want you to carry this with you for the next 40 days until Easter to help you remember how much Jesus suffered, but how much Jesus loves you and knows when you suffer how it feels. All right? So will you pray with me? Oh, do you want a cloth? Do you want one of these? Oh, want one of those for you? Oh, will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we thank you that you know how we feel. When we feel sad or hurt or scared, you know and you promise to help us. When we look at these purple cloths, help us to remember that all the time. Help us to remember how much you love us. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you can each take a cloth and then go on with our friends upstairs for a little time together. There you go, Lily. All right. Oh, very good. I got a little piece. Oh, you want to get that one? Very good. Oh, thank you. Yes, Allie has an announcement to share. Thank you, Allie. Oh, we need a mic. This Wednesday is our first Lenten Wednesday, and Michelle and Charlie and I were busy eating pancakes on Tuesday. The sign-up hasn't come out yet for soups and some bread and set up and clean up help. So I have that on my phone. If you want to track me down after church, I can get you all signed up or you can just bring something to share. But I think we have a few soups coming in, but we'll need one or two more with some bread and um, some set up and clean up help. But this is our first Wednesday. We'll start around 530 and we'll have some soup and fellowship before church, which starts around seven. So thank you once again. Come track me down. Um, thanks. Thanks, Allie. Yes, that's a great um, intro indeed this coming Wednesday. As I said, the season of Lent is a time for additional prayer, additional um, 
service, acts of love, and um, fasting for those who choose to do that. And on Wednesday night, you can do all three. You can have a nice light dinner, counter that fasting. There will be time for service. There will be time for prayer. At 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights, we will have a service of worship in here. And um, the Wednesday night, it is um, really an informal time out in the narthex with fellowship and time to have soup. The sanctuary um, is going to be open um, for um, individual prayer, and there'll be some activities um, for that additional prayer time in here. And then at 7, we'll all come together for that uh, service of worship. Part of our time on Wednesday night is a book study on the book Boundless Compassion, uh, which Susan Cole um, is leading us through. So there is one additional book left on the table out there if somebody has not picked that up yet. So also available on Kindle. Yes, um, you can order that online. So, so that's what's happening this coming Sunday. See, we have fully moved into um, ministry updates and sharing of joy. So it looks like, Ed, you have uh, a joy to share. Yeah, I have a, a couple things. Uh, in personal life, uh, I don't need to have a toe amputated. And... Praise <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> and... I became a great-grandfather for the first uh, time. Uh, my son is, uh, my daughter's son is a uh, paramedic with the Omaha Fire Department, and he was born on the 23rd of February, and his wife, the mother, uh, is a caseworker for the state, uh, for the city of Omaha, and my grandson's birthday is the 23rd of February, and this little girl, Lily, was born on the same date, the 23rd of February. Oh, wow, very fun. Congratulations, Ed. Is this on now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So speaking of birthdays, you're probably going to say, it, but the flowers on the altar in honor of Michael, who's turning 11 Tuesday, which doesn't even seem possible. Um, and then I just wanted to let everyone know that the pancake supper on Tuesday, <clears throat> sorry, was a huge success. Um, we had an all male youth team doing the cooking they did a great job even though we had some electrical issues and we raised um, over five hundred dollars for our neighbors in need fund but we always need more so please contribute to the bake sale today very good thank you and june yes thanks all for your help well, on good morning um, I wanted to get everybody, make everybody aware that we will be participating in Annapolis and the Pride and the Festival this year. Super exciting. It grows every year. Um, June 3rd, save the date. There'll be more announcements coming through the bulletin and others, but if you have any questions, see me. Thanks, June. Danny? Busy, busy yeah, morning. Um, our, our grandson and Craig's son, AJ, is a, goes to Catonsville High School, and he's a trumpet player. His name was put forth to audition for the all-county band, and he not only made it, he is out of, there were 15 chairs for trumpeters, and he got fifth chair out of the whole county. All right. So. Congratulations. Can we sign him up for here? Uh, Easter is, I'll give you the date, just a, just a minute. Um, and Susan, we have a... One more announcement. I think if you step a little closer.
Very good. Well, thank you, everybody. You pretty much covered everything I needed to cover, so that works out great. Um, I do just want to note for the youth in the room, just to make sure you're aware of the two events, March 12th and 26th, coming up. Um, so I wanted to lift that up for you. And, um, of course, also want to name, um, there is a, a handout out in the narthex, information in the bulletin about how we can provide relief for Turkey and Syria in an ongoing way, so I just want to flag that for folks. Melissa? mentioned my daughter turned 18 on February 23rd, so there's a lot of great people born on February 23rd. Right. Along the lines of the youth, we are going to have a youth mission trip to Imperial, Pennsylvania, June 18th to 24th. I'm going to be heading that up since Terrence has been asked by the bishop to move on to a different position. So if you have any questions or know anybody who might be interested, um, the Wanners are bringing about a half of a minivan full, so we could use some other folks too. Thank you. Yep, very good. It's an awesome experience. So. Um, also, uh, Kristen Dubinsky's birthday is today, so she's not here with us, but happy birthday to Kristen. So I'm going to finish up um, just with a little um, sort of an update, um, some uh, fun news. We um, at Gloria Day um, have begun incorporating the use of a new hymnal supplement, um, which has been produced by our church. It is this hymnal supplement called All Creation Sings. And uh, so for this season of Lent, we are actually using out of this book, um, the um, setting for Holy Communion um, that was written for this book. And the, the fun part about it is it, it has two sets of texts for confession and for prayers, um, one set for the evening and then a, a new one. The new one is what we're using today. Our confession and forgiveness came out of this new book, and, and um, three of the songs that we will sing today came out of this setting that we'll sing every Sunday. You know, when we Lutherans get together on Sunday morning, we generally have 10 songs that we sing on a Sunday morning, and about seven of them are the same every Sunday in a season. Um, so those are coming out of here this year. All right. Um, and then our, our three other major hymns as well. So this is an uh, awesome resource. There are copies out there um, that I commend to you to look through. One, it, it's a sad state, but one of the services in here is a service of worship following a violent event. There is a service in here lamenting racism. Perhaps my favorite pages in here are, though, at the back in which we have a complete essay on scriptural images for God that expands beyond the old white man with hair flowing up in the clouds, right? Biblical, scriptural images for God, which are many. So there are many copies of this uh, out there on the table for the bake sale. I just invite you to take a moment to, uh, to flip through. Perhaps the one thing people would find most helpful here is um, the prayer section. Um, and prayer at the death of a pet, at the death of a pet. It is a, a lovely prayer, and we all who have pets know how helpful that can be. So um, that was just a special um, announcement I wanted to lift up today as we begin using this on Wednesday nights during our service. There's a service of word and prayer in here that we will be using. So um, an exciting time, an exciting time indeed. So I believe those were the updates and the announcements I had to share. I invite us now um, into a spirit of openness as we prepare to receive Jesus in the word of God. first reading is a reading from Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? 
The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made wine cloths for themselves. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 32 is read responsibly. Happy are those whose transgressions are forgiven and, those, and whose sin is put away. Blessed are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. Is that not the right one? Sorry about that. Wrong one. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in times of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse and mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. Second reading is a reading from Romans. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law. But sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man. Jesus Christ abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. Oh God, amid these joys of life, creation's glory Grace to keep your word. 
Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to them, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear family and faith, grace to you and peace from God, our Creator and our loving Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Lead me not into temptation. I can find my way on my own. That according to Jane Seabrook in her book, Furry Logic, Laugh at Life. But isn't that the truth? Hmm? Temptation. Today really could be called Temptation Sunday because, well, at least for 18 centuries, by some counts, uh, the gospel reading for this first Sunday in Lent, as long as Lent has been around, has been this temptation story of Jesus, which could incite preachers to look around at other texts appointed for the day for uh, something to focus on. Well, in other years, that would go better than today. In other years, the Old Testament story for today is the story of Noah and the rainbow and the flood, or in another year of the Israelites being saved from their captivity in Egypt. And the New Testament readings in other years are lovely readings about how Jesus will save us from whatever it is from which we need to be saved. But this year, did you all have warm fuzzies hearing that second reading from Romans, that theological treatise on justification, forgiveness, redemption? Yeah, that's kind of a study piece. So. We'll go back to that when we're sitting around a table with a lot of coffee. And as far as that Old Testament reading about Adam and Eve, well, that story, while fodder for all kinds of jokes and sarcastic retorts, thanks for eating the apple, woman. Thanks for shifting blame, man, right? When really that whole story is about how we all fall short of God's glory. Man, woman, in between. Our giving in to that which tempts us away from God, away from loving each other, away from loving ourselves. Which, of course, does give us pause to think about what does tempt us and to recognize that indeed, like Jesus, sometimes it is the devil. Of course, I'm not talking about the little pitchfork guy running around with a tail. I say that all the time, right? Lead us not into temptation. We pray every Sunday in the Lord's Prayer. And as Martin Luther explains in his catechism, that means that while God tempts no one to sin, we ask that God would preserve and keep us so that the devil and the world 
and even our flesh would not deceive or mislead us into false belief or despair or other great and shameful sins. That although we may be attacked by them, we may finally prevail and gain the victory because a mighty fortress is our God. Amen? Amen. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, of holy baptism, he says, is being redeemed from death and the devil which originally in our reading today is diabolos, is the word. And in the Bible, it gets translated devil, adversary. It takes on various forms, Satan, Beelzebub, Lucifer, a snake. All of these forms embody one thing, evil. Evil at work in this world. That which opposes God's will and God's desire for our well-being and our future with hope. And make no mistake, this evil pursues you, it pursues me, like a roaring ravenous lion, as Scripture says. And the slanderer, the father of lies, the devil, will use every deceit to entice Jesus and you and me to turn away from God, to turn away from neighbor to turn away from our own sense of being a beloved child of God. And one of the things we see in how Jesus was tempted was that evil, the devil, whatever, will even use good things of this world to try and separate us from God's love, from one another, and from love of self. I mean, what would be so bad about turning bread into or stones into bread to feed the world, or demonstrating faith in dramatic ways, or wielding political power. Hmm? Nothing. Nothing would be bad about those things except the devil uses them with the intention that through them, Jesus would have been serving himself and would be turning away from God's plan. And dear ones, is not the real source behind so much of evil in the world today turning away from God and God's love, God's love for all, God's love for us. But Jesus doesn't bite. In, in fact, he quotes his confirmation scripture, right? Or from his bar mitzvah or whatever it was, right? Clearly, Jesus knew the power of the word. But then comes the most important part of the whole story, the devil departed from him. This text is a warning to all about the dangers of temptations that would separate us or seek to separate us from God's love, our love for one another, and most importantly, our love for ourselves. This story announces that evil has met its master in Jesus. What we see in our gospel reading for today is that the power of evil, however it is named, is not stronger than the power of God in Christ. Not in life, not in death, as we see in Jesus' resurrections. So, this is our good news for the day. Especially when we feel the devil pursuing us, tempting us, Tempting us to believe that God does not know our name. Tempting us to believe that God is not good or that God is not at work in the world. Tempting us to believe that God does not hold us in the palm of God's hand. Tempting us to believe that we are not beautifully created children of God. When life is at its worst, when we are sick, betrayed, in grief, the devil will be there. Make no mistake, whispering in your ear, if God loves you, life wouldn't be so hard. If God loves you, you wouldn't be going through this. If your faith was strong enough, you'd be able to handle this better. Sometimes we give in to those voices. But the good news today is that Christ's voice is even louder, saying, yes, God does love you. Yes, you are worthy of God's grace. Yes, other people are different from you. Love them anyway. 
And when we fail, the good news today is that there is forgiveness for you, for me, and even for those others we think there shouldn't be forgiveness for. Remember, it was the Spirit that led Jesus into the wilderness, not the devil. And it is the Spirit that leads and accompanies us too. In the face of all temptations and evils in the world, the Spirit will lead us to confess and trust in God's love, to believe in God's love for us and for all, no matter what. And in the face of that temptation, and in the face of that promise, we can say, thanks be to God. Amen. invite you to stand as you are able as we join in our hymn of the day, When We Are Tested. seated. As is noted in the bulletin, as we prepare for a time of prayer, um, I commend to our congregational prayer list that is printed in the bulletin, but we do pause to share any updates um, and additions that have come in. Um, I will share that uh, we had a text from Donna Baranti today. Ron is having some issues uh, with his legs, and the, she is taking him to the ER. So holding Ron, of course, in prayer uh, this morning um, that they find out what is going on. Marna Ross has asked that we hold her friend Anne in prayer as she deals with uh, cancer treatment. Of course, um, Jan Bell has asked that we hold her mom in prayer, Jo, uh, who is in hospice care, and also her former husband, Charlie, who is in hospice care. Cody has asked that we remember her friend Ari in prayer as she faces a difficult time. And of course, we continue to hold Sean Hayes in prayer as he moves through uh, the judicial system. And of course, continuing to hold in prayer um, those in Turkey and Syria recovering from the earthquake. And of course, this weekend in particular, holding our Jewish friends in prayer as that community has faced additional threats um, to them in, in these days. So holding them in prayer for sure. So Paul, you have a, an update to share? I have two items. Uh, two weeks ago to, tonight, we were in Springfield, Missouri, watching the Super Bowl with my brother Mark, his wife Tina, and her 95-year-old dad, Don Chastine. Soon after the game was over, he had problems breathing and coughing up blood, and he's been hospitalized ever since. And uh, recently we learned that he's no longer eating, so this has caused great anguish for our sister-in-law, Tina. Second item is that our son Jim is 
going to India for two weeks. We pray for his well-being and safe return. All right. Annie, did you have something? Uh, prayers for our friend Marilyn. Uh, her brother Steve has suffered from depression and alcoholism, and he took his life this week. Uh, prayers for the family of three friends of ours, Catherine and Rod and Donna, who all died this week. Very sad. I'm just asking for prayers for my mom, um, Betty Byer. She's going to start uh, some treatment for liver cancer for the next six weeks. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing those. I'd invite you to stand as you are able. Our um, song to, to move us into a spirit of prayer is new for us, so I will sing it through once, and, and then the choir is going to sing it through once, and then we will all sing it together. Come, bring your burdens to God. Come, bring your burdens to God. Come, bring your burdens to God, for Jesus will never say no. Come, bring your burdens to God. Come, bring your burdens to God. Come, bring your burdens to God. For Jesus will never say no. Come, bring your burdens to God. Come, bring your burdens to God. Come, bring your burdens to God. For Jesus will never say no. God of wild beasts and of angels, of waters and wilderness, we thank you and praise you for calling us here to worship you. Sustain your church in times of wilderness. Give vision and wisdom to bishops, their staff, and all entrusted with the ministry of administration. Counsel all who faithfully lead your people into the future. Continue to remember us and the covenants, the promises you have made with every living creature. Lord, in your mercy, we pray especially today for this, your family and faith known as Gloria Day. In this Lenten season of spiritual renewal and through our fasting, daily prayer, and works of love, may we be shown your ways, taught your paths, guided in doing right and led into deeper faith and trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the world you have made, Speak tenderly yet strongly that the nations may know your loving presence and their leaders, especially our own, might know your guiding wisdom. Keep in the shadow of your holy wings those in the military striving for peace. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who find themselves in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit. May they put their trust in you that you will remember them in compassion and love. May your angels wait upon those in need. Today we especially name before you Anne, Joe and Charlie, Ari, Sean and Ron, Betty and Don. We lift up our Jewish friends asking that you protect and comfort and strengthen them. We lift up all of those recovering in Turkey and Syria from the earthquakes. We lift up those who mourn in these days, asking that you comfort them with the resurrection hope, especially the family and friends of Steve, of Donna, of Rodney, of Catherine. And we remember all of those others on our congregational prayer list, and anyone known to be in any sort of need whom we now name before you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, 
We pray that you would keep our blessed dead in your eternal embrace until with all your saints we are reunited with them by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers for those throughout the world suffering in a variety of ways. We pray for continued cleanup efforts following East Palestine, Ohio train derailment. We pray for the families and loved ones remembering the anniversary of the Orlando shooting. We pray for an end to gun violence across our nation and world. We pray for those grieving the loss of loved ones in Little Rock. We pray for those injured and killed during violent raids in the West Bank. We pray for peace in our world, especially at this one year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear our cry when we call to you and renew and uphold us with your spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And I invite you to share a word and sign of God's peace with one another. As we receive our morning offering, I invite you to be seated, and I offer yet once again a word of, of deep appreciation, especially to those watching online who are accessing all of the multiple ways of providing and offering online. Your, your gifts and ties are very much appreciated and indeed help make it possible for us to continue to reach you wherever you are. I now invite the uh, ushers to come forward.
please stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you now in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and God of might, God, creator of our wilderness world, holy God, savior of the lost, holy God, comforter of the sick and suffering, we give you thanks for your everlasting might. We glorify you for your covenant of mercy. For 40 days, you cleansed the earth with the waters of the flood. For 40 days, you illumined Moses with the words of your law. For 40 years, you fed your people with manna from heaven. You became truly human in Jesus, our brother. For 40 days, with fasting and prayer, he renounced the power of the devil. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup, it is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We extol his life. Amen. Amen. We lament his death. Amen. Amen. We celebrate his resurrection. Amen. Transform us, O God, with your lively spirit. Make this food into manna for our journey, the body and blood of your Son. Grant us 40 days of repentance and forgiveness. 
Teach us your words of wisdom and justice. Renew the whole earth with baptismal grace and at the last, lead your pilgrim people through our deserts to your Easter garden and our holy springtime of the soul. To you, O God, creator, savior, comforter, father, son, and Holy Spirit, be our worship and praise, adoration and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Some words of invitation and instruction for Holy Communion are printed in the bulletin. Just to emphasize here at Gloria Day, all are truly welcome at this table, wherever you are in your journey of faith and life. Jesus invites you to taste and see his goodness in this meal. Those choosing to not commune this day may still come forward. Simply offer a sign and you will receive a blessing. Gluten-free bread is available. Simply ask from the server, as is um, grape juice, which is in the second pouring chalice that follows the wine that is in the first chalice. I now invite the communion servers to come forward. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the
Please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. And we sing together our ascending hymn. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.